Okay, hey guys, it's Joey Shanks here. Hope you guys enjoyed the Petri Dish Planets episodes, and I'm going to do a little in-depth After Effects breakdown on how I created some of the composites for the final shots of some of the planets in our solar system. Now what I think I'm first going to do is show you the Jupiter shot real quick. Pretty simple. I'm just going to go over a few of the things that I used to achieve this shot. So. Originally, this is an image sequence file where I just snap tons of photos one after the other. But to make it a little quicker and more time effective, I broke it down just to export it as a video file. And here that is here. So we're going to turn that shot into that composite I just showed you. So we're going to open up After Effects. So let's drag this into a new comp. And just a little soft, the focus I could have had it a little bit better but we're just gonna have to go with that. So we have this here. Now what we first want to do is a lot of people will just do a mask and crop do a mask and and just crop in the center and then just feather it which is can work but I think it's really important to try to use as much of the edges as you can because as you can see there's some shadowing here so we're gonna use that as a reference for the shadow we're going to be making in post. And it's just going to, I think using this shadow as a reference shadow will help sell the effect more as opposed to making everything a digital shadow. So we're going to use the image and use the already existing shadowing. But first we need to get rid of this reflection of the light. Some of these bubbles we want to duplicate this. And We're just gonna highlight an area below it. Click on it. Drag it up above it. Feather it maybe 45, probably too much. maybe darken that just a smidge there we go all right and I don't know if you guys notice this little guy here I think it's a smudge on the lens and this guy here and also make sure that when you're cropping these out make sure it's not something that's on the, the actual liquid. Okay, so as you can see that white thing, that is actually on the liquid. So let's not worry about that for right now. Same with that one. But we, we can get rid of this. So let's make another, duplicate this again. And let's call this reflection mask. Then we'll call this black dot mask feather it let's go eight and this one looks like it could be maybe we could bring up the brightness just a smidge Yep. Okay. So that looks pretty good for now. And the bubbles are a lot more towards the bottom. So I'm not going to worry. Well, let's just do it just so we can say we have it there just in case we want to use this the edging here. So what I'm going to do is maybe take this area and then mask it here. So let's duplicate it again. We'll name it bubble mask. And let's just go along the edge here. Rotate like that. All right, obviously this needs to be color corrected a little bit. Probably feathered, maybe double that. All 
Okay. All right, so here we go. We have it. Got all, all of our bubbles out and our a lot of the stuff that we don't want in the shot. Now let's pre comp. Let's pre compose all of this. Yep. Uh, control A, Control Shift C, and call this Jupiter. Okay. Now we need to make a mask of this. So. This is something that I learned from a gentleman called Cameron Crest, who has a YouTube channel, which is Crest VFX. Really nice guy. And he showed me, this is a pretty simple technique, but I wasn't really aware of it, of using your guides and rulers to help guide you to create the mask. So what I would do is go to view and select show rulers. And you see these guys pop up and then show guides. And our guides are when we click here and drop down, we see this purple little line. Now what I'm going to do is position in the corners of our circle here. So when we create a mask, it'll kind of snap into place. Very useful. So we got it on all the edges there. And we'll go hit the ellipse tool for masking and then click here drag and it kind of snaps into place. We'll have to fine tune it here but it's a nice starter. So let's feather it. We don't want to feather it too much because we want to keep the natural edge on it. Maybe 8 and maybe let's maybe bring in the expansion maybe 12. So and, and then you're going to want to turn these off so go to view and then show guides. And you keep the rulers on if you like. Okay so we have our Jupiter here. And you see is we're still keeping this natural shading here, which is nice. So now what we want to do is add a little rim horizon. Now we, what we want to do is kind of edge out this area here with a nice little circular ring to kind of give definition to the horizon here. Because it, we're trying to create depth and make this look like an actual planet. And right now, the shading up here is helping create depth but we need since the shadings up here we're gonna need some sort of light source down here uh, to make it believable so what you can do is we can make a new solid and let's make it kind of like maybe like a bright yellow or maybe like a mid-tone yellow let's call this horizon and what we can do is copy the mask here and paste the same mask onto the color so it's going to be the same size. And now we need to turn these into 3D layers. So we can check here, toggle switch modes, click on this, both of these guys. And let's slide this guy behind it. There we go. And I kind of just fine tune it and just kind of bring it. So it's just a little edge there. Um, and it looks like that orange, I think it could be a little bit brighter. But also let's let's throw a glow on this to see that might that might have it blend in a little better. So, Go to effects, stylize, glow, and yeah, let's change this color. And also, let's put a little bit more of a feather on this, maybe 16, and maybe make it a little smaller, maybe like 98. Because remember, we just want it coming off kind of half the planet. And let's actually make this white. And then we're going to duplicate this. And let's make it kind of blurry. Horizon blur. And let's make this orange. Effect, blur, sharpen. Let's do a fast blur. And make it like 45. So yeah, so that helped even more. 60. 
Let's bring in our star field so we can really start and see this thing come to life. So I have an already existing video file. It's a nice slow little star field rotation. Nice wide shot. So we're going to incorporate that into the sequence. But we need to track the motion of the star field move. So what we can do here is we have it in a separate comp, but we can bring it actually bring it into our our comp we're working on. And we need to track it. So let's highlight it, go to animation, track motion. Also, first let's make a new null object. Because we're gonna apply the tracking data to the null. So animation, track motion. Okay, and we want to do the position and the rotation. And motion target, null one, so that's good. So we're just going to pick a couple nice spots. And good thing about this is the stars, there's some bigger stars there that stay there. And it tracks really easily. All right, let's let's run through it. Well, let's make sure we're also at the beginning of our clip. I always make the, yep, we're at the end, so that's I always forget to do that. So make sure you're at the beginning of the clip. Now we'll run through it. All right, that looked pretty clean. So let's apply it, hit OK. All right, now we'll go back to our comp here. OK, we got stars here. And obviously, we need to have it. So it's going with the stars. So we have our null here. So we're going to select these three, and we're going to parent it to that null. See this little? this little icon here, drag it up, and then we scrub through it. It's going with the star field, which helps sell the effect. OK, but now we need to have the shadow be a little more defined to help sell the overall composition, a 3D light. So let's make a new light. And we're going to use a point light. I have it for 250, and I have a pretty wide radius because this is a giant planet out in space. So the shadows are going to be very wide and curved and not be very shallow. Okay, now I'm I'm just starting to really kind of being getting comfortable with shadow with lights. So it definitely takes practice. And what I found a really good tool or a really good view angle is like your custom view. And the one thing I I never really knew till kind of recently is that when you're in the custom view and you hit C for your camera you can rotate around and everything and it's not going to affect your active camera so feel free when you're in here to kind of zoom around really see where you are get comfortable and, and just it gives it a good perspective on where you're at and you're not going to screw anything up so I always kind of check my top first to see where this lights at And a lot of times, too, I also will go to two views. And I'll make the one on my left the active camera. And then this one will be, we can do top for now. And so you see my camera's here. So if I bring this towards it, it should get brighter. And it does. But also the the, the width of the, the light is not is somewhat narrow, for the planet at least. But I kind of like what it's doing here. And then let's slide it to the this way. Because we want it to match. We want the brightest area to be around this bright horizon we created. Because you see, obviously, there's a shadow there. You see, I'm going down with my Y here. That is creating a nice natural shadow around the planet here. And let's go to our custom view.
is kind of here shooting that way. As you can see, so it's creating a nice soft edge around here. And let's go back to our single view. Let's turn this light on and off. And as you can see, that really, I think, helps sell the shot. Helps sell this horizon point here. Makes the shot a little more believable. It, it's a nice fade off. And we can play with some of the light settings. So let's say we don't want any fall off. So that kind of just adds a little bit of light to it. And it, but it doesn't add any shadow, which I think still kind of works, but I like having that shadow in there. Now I think the shadow can be a little bit more higher up, a little more of an angle, so. And this might be one of the things where we have to rotate Jupiter a little bit to match the lighting. And then we, let's change our horizon bring it up a little bit there we go so kind of matches a little bit better so starting to create some depth kind of looks like it has a little bit of dimension to it we can turn the light on and off again so you see how much it really adds to the shot if we have that light in there. Now let me show you the other way to shadow an object, not using a 3D light. Okay, so here's our composite. The move looks good. Everything looks pretty pretty realistic. There is some banding, some banding going on around our horizon glow. Now to fix that, what we want to do is make a new adjustment layer. And in that adjustment layer, we're going to add some grain, noise, and curves. So we're bringing down, so we're adding grain, just a very small amount, 0.3. Noise, just 3% of noise. And we're just bringing the green down a little bit. We could possibly bring down our blue just a smidge as well. Okay, and you can see our final result here. Looks pretty good and really not that intensive of a post-production process to achieve this. So hopefully this gives you a little better understanding of how I was able to create these final composites with the raw footage. And there's going to be a Dropbox link in the description below so you guys can have access to these files and play, play around with a little bit on your own. So look for that link in the video description. And please share any of the footage that you guys shoot and your final composites. So, hope you guys enjoyed this one, and we'll see you next time. This is Joey Shanks, and I'm out. Later on. <laughs>